and waiting for compile times. I'm out of caffeine. Thing. There's always more caffeine in the mini fridge. I'm too lazy to walk upstairs for more energy drinks. The only solution, of course, is a small fridge in the corner. Alright, so let's boot up this uh, real level. Um, Just call destroy all bots. And fix that potential bug. All right, so if I boot up the, let's go back to that player logic object and that let's put if we're in stage, we'll allow ourselves to spawn a bot for now. How often do I stream? Hello, Sage GG. I stream as often as I can. So there's kind of a a mix there with programming and working on projects and everything where my schedule is definitely not regular. I pretty much stream when I can and content that I can actually stream that's not just like secret stuff. Uh, but pretty much I try to do it uh, every day, but I sometimes have to do server work stuff for for games and that can be just too many passwords too many special things all right so we spawned a bot in and i want to reset the the level is the bot still around how many projects am i working on i am currently working on two projects uh, i'm working on this project full-time which is uh, Dashkin. Oh man, I need to fix that levels camera. That camera is annoying. All right, it's got the close camera type. Let's make it the default camera type. Save that. So I'm working on this game. And I'm also working on Maelstrom, uh, the game on Steam, the naval combat game. Uh, I've been working with them on their back-end server stuff to make it a lot cheaper so they're not just paying Amazon $2 million, bajillion dollars every month for server costs. And I'm also doing some like back-end telemetry work for them so they can <laughs> they know how many orc ships they got roaming around the high seas. All right, so let's spawn in a bot and let's retry. Make sure the bot's dead. Bot is dead. Excellent. Cool. So we got that in there. Let's go unhook that guy so we don't spawn bots again. So just two, um, but this one's full time. And the other one, I'm not sure how much I'll be doing. They, uh, 
they wanted me to kind of do some small bug fixes and stuff like that, and I'm just like, eh, I'm not going to do that. I'll make big systems that I can control and that I can use for my main project, but I'm not there to, like, go fix a whole bunch of stuff like, oh, the pickups are bouncing a little bit too much on the... Yeah, <laughs> the pickups are bouncing too much on this thing. Could you go fix that? I'd be like, no. I'm not, I'm not fucking doing that. Uh, mainly because it's their project and they can fix their small bugs. And as soon as I start fixing any of those, then I'll be responsible for it. And it's just like, no, like it's your project. I'm. You called me in as kind of a consultant help dude. I'm not just going to go do the, the bitch work. You know, I got, I got too many years of experience to be doing that bullshit. I'll do it for my own project because I wrote all that crap and I'm cleaning up bugs I wrote. That's fine with me. But not the other way around. Okay, so we need hookup uh, jumps for stat tracking and hookup lands for stat tracking. So I don't think we have anything hooked up for that. So let's go to our player states. So jumps and lands. For stat tracking. So let's see, uh, we got mission stats, and we've got other stats, so let me see, is it gameplay stats? Where do we put all this trash? Alright, gameplay stats has goals on goals, jumps and lands, excellent. So let's go ahead and broadcast that that changed. Jump. And we need jumps for that. So mission stat changed and stage stat changed. All right. Jumps. Jumps. Jumps has an S in it. Uh, stage stats go first. All right, so next one will be lands. How long have I been working on games? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, I have worked professionally on games for... Is it nine years now? No, it's eight years. Yeah, it's eight years in a month. Uh, but I went to a four-year college to learn how to program, so I've been programming games for 12 years, or not 12 years, 11 and 11 years, because I graduated in three years, um, three and a half, whatever I was counting, so 11 and a half years of actual like game programming, but that's from zero, so I usually just say eight years. All right, so those will be our land stats. So let's compile that up, and then we'll need to hook up the blueprint for actual landing and for jumping to report it. What did you work on prior to these? Um, well, I worked at Electronic Arts for 
three years or four years or something like that. Uh, I worked on Dragon Age Legends and some Mass Effect 3 stuff when I was there. Um, also worked on Dawngate, the MOBA, which um, they had out in beta for a while, but game got canceled. Uh, I worked at Molten Games down in San Diego for a while. Uh, we're making a game called Blunderbuss. Uh, we got backstabbed by Korean businessmen and ran out of money. Uh, so that got canceled after a year. Then uh, I went over to Amazon. I worked on some mobile titles there. Um, the Unmaking, which is a total piece of trash, but um, shipped it. And then I was working at Amazon for more than a couple of years, working on uh, unreleased, unannounced titles. Um, and I can't really talk too much about that other than I got sick of every six months the people at Amazon would switch directions and cancel stuff. It was stupid. Like, there was a game that was canceled, then a small team, and the team forked off and worked on another one while, like, a couple people kept working on that old idea. It was more like, the original game was canceled, so... Uh, everybody started working on a different game design, and a couple of those people started working on, like, experimental game designs. Those experimental game design people eventually just took that old game design idea and just did it. And then that worked out, so they canceled the main project to put everybody on the project that um, was the experiment. It just, and then, then they eventually canceled that, and it's just like, Jesus Christ, you guys. Get your shit together. So now I am working on my own stuff. Amazon paid me too much, so um, now I live in a basement that I own, making my own stuff, and that's pretty nice. So that's the plan to continue doing that. I'm basically making a it's a PC, it's a single and multiplayer game. We'll be releasing on Steam later, hopefully this year. We'll see. We'll release it when it's done. Or when it's good enough to launch on Steam without, like, because you only get to launch on Steam once. So we'd rather launch when we can. But it's currently in early access. And, uh... We've been in early access, available to the public to buy for the last four, four or five months since December, basically. So it's going pretty well. Um, next update, update seven, is going out next weekend, and that's going to be missions. Well, the industry is pretty volatile, but you know, I pretty much every two years would go find another job or a transfer. So, that's kind of how things worked. It's basically everybody's resume in the game industry is like that. I mean, it's a good... It's volatile, but, like, once you're in the game industry, just... I don't know. I've never had any trouble finding a job in the game industry. They're like, oh, God, you actually have experience working in the industry? <laughs> Come work for us. We need more people. Breaking into the game industry, though, is just incredibly difficult because everybody needs only experienced developers because it's such a risky... Making a game is a very risky endeavor. So the question is, should I put this in the jump code? I guess I could just put it in the movement object for jump.
Well, jumping is different. Um, maybe I can put in the movement code for the animations. Because we have like the in air state. This is kind of a goddamn mess, isn't it? Jump was air jump. Alright, I think that's where I need to put it. I need to put this in the movement object code, and uh, that's going to be where it goes. You're in the industry as well. It's definitely not hard to find a replacement gig as an engineer. Yeah, as an engineer, like I'm a server engineer too, so I'm a specialist. Um, and especially being a server engineer specialist, it's there's a reason I put server engineer on my resume right out of college, even though I knew nothing about running servers. It's because people need them. But as an artist, oh man, as an artist and a designer, people just get screwed. It's... It's tough. All right, so I got the player controller. The player controller, I believe, should have the player state on it. So something like that is what we need. So we'll also pass in if the jump was a wall jump or not. Yeah. I see you also do not abide by Epic's dumb coding standards on naming everything with leading caps and not prefixing members. Yeah. I, I've kind of, I mix it together. Kind of when I have things that interact with blueprints and stuff like that, I try to kind of stay in terms of what Unreal wants done. All right, that should do it. All right, so if we go to our player states, I want on jump, I want bull wall jump. Uh, should we also do air jumps? Let me see. Air jump. Okay, wall jumps, air jump. 
I mean, I could do unjump. Nah, this is kind of nasty. I probably need an enum for jump types. Well, it's good enough for now. Yeah, naming conventions are stupid. I don't know. I pretty much every team I've been on, I've been in charge of the team, uh, except for like the first year out of college. I was fortunate enough to get into positions where I could be the tech lead on stuff and be in charge of the team. And man, people got some stupid ass opinions about coding standards. Just. I mean, I have seen people bring in, you know, stacks of papers into meetings to be like, we should do this. I'm just like, shut up, get back to your desk, do your fucking job. I do not care what people in Hungary use for notation for, like, prefixing things. Like, it's, we do not need to spend eight hours talking about this crap. Usually rename the variables using meta markup to meet editor standards, removing the m prefix basically. Yeah, I use the m prefix basically. Um, I got that habit ingrained into me when I was in college using like Lua scripts, and there's just so many times where you forget a this dot on the front of some Lua script or some JavaScript or something else and have a local variable that you don't realize that you just <laughs> m underscore gets beaten into you because. Just, yes, it's a member variable. If you see an M underscore without this pointer in front of it, you will have a problem. You are in trouble. So I use that notation pretty much for most everything, but I try to be more friendly to Unreal in the systems that Unreal uses. So. Can game data. Where are we? Where is my player state? I don't like how. Visual Studio hides that stuff sometimes. I guess I need a new stat here then. Stat. Means I have to add a whole bunch of trash for that. Ouch! It's gonna, it's gonna suck. Oh no! I hit the wrong thing. Close it. Yeah, I like it for ease of reading and stuff. Having to look on the function to see if it's a member, or local, or blah. Less information on it. Yeah, definitely. I like the idea that you should be able to look at a function and know pretty much like you don't need to know everything about what a variable is but just know the scope of it is just you look at it and you're like oh it's got an m underscore in the front i know exactly what that is i'm probably in a class or i'm operating upon an object that has this as a member variable oh it's got an s on the front it's probably static it's got a g on the front all right it's probably something i shouldn't fuck with because it's, <laughs> it's global or whatever um, all right, so I've got these enums. I need to go to the 
Is it in level utils? Is it for stat here? Yeah, I've got all this ridiculous ass stuff here. It's a mess. I'll fix it eventually. So is this your is this the dream game? Um, this is not my dream game. This is I work with an artist, Adam Phillips, who he made the Bitey of Brackenwood series. Um, you may know him from Newgrounds back in like 2006 era. He won a bunch of awards for his Flash animation. He's a, he's also an one of the assistant directors on Bob's Burgers, so he's a pretty cool guy to know and to work with. He's very good at what he does. And the Brackenwood series is his his baby. And as an independent developer and an engineer, I really could give a damn about art and design things. So it's really nice having him as a partner because he cares very much about it. And it lets him do what he does best. And it lets me do what I do best, which is not give a damn about stuff while being important because that's that's very important as an engineer uh, the feeling that I am myself important uh, it's, it's important All right, air jumps and ball jumps Bunch of trash. I think I would have made a better system than this, but I didn't. All right, so that should all compile there. So I need to go over to JavaScript land and do the same crap because I never set up my enums properly for this thing. Where are you? Utils, you kind of slider in the alphabet. Pretty sure every engineer says that when they write a giant switch statement. Uh, what are you talking about? There's no no cause for concern. There's everything is fine. Uh, what I use is I use a lot of uh, templated programming. So pretty much like uh, I have a whole backend server system that's written in Java, which powers the backend data storage, you know, online matchmaking stuff for this game. So I have a whole bunch of code generation set up. So for a lot of it, it's actually very good. You know, for like here's HTTP call template stuff. So, you know, I could just go edit a data file which defines defines an object and like one of these so I can say okay you know there's a user stat leaderboard which has uh, an array of accounts on it so I can you know have all these things uh, kind of mock down data and then I just do generate and it generates a whole shitload of code for me but I never set that up for enums and then I started working on the stats system 
which is all in the database and all that stuff. So I use like shorter names and yeah. So usually I don't have to deal with all this, I don't have to deal with all this screwy crap, but just because I did a bad job in some of these. But I could spend two million years fixing it. Like you can just, you can continue to fix problems all day long. At some point you just need to buckle down and ship the product. So pick, pick my battles. All right, I think that'll work for that. So the other thing that we want to do is we want to get the land. So that's going to be in our movement code. We want to know when we leave the ground. So. So it's going to be the update snap to floor inside of the update locomotion. When I'm in the air, so update locomotion in air. Ah, we have a land event broadcast, which is excellent. I can take that event, or I can just increment the pointer, the, the counter when we do it. So I'll just do that. Very good. Yeah. So if you are a if you are an engineer, what what sort of engineer? I guess if you're in the game industry and you're you're working on stuff, I would imagine if you're on a Friday night. Uh, well, I guess shit. It's Saturday. Yeah, that's what happens. You lose you lose track of time on a Saturday, and you're not like way too drunk or something. Well, you're obviously not a not a server engineer because but uh, let's see. On land, we'll have that. We should have those things. We can now start counting them. It's in our enums. Is there any other place I added this trash? I don't think so. Like we have the get name. I think this is wrong for the stats. Where are these stats coming from? It's coming from the stats object itself. Right, that's what I'm missing.
heat. Here we are. Alright, so where is F user stats? It's gonna be the fill. Is it in transformation utils? And then our jumps, all right. All right, we got obstacles touched, all that sort of stuff. Excellent. Anything else in here that I needed to look at? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, I think the, the first assignment that we had in college way back when was a text based chatbot. And I remember writing all the responses for that chatbot in one gigantic switch statement, which we randomly went over again. It was just. Everybody writes those, but uh, nothing tops the Dragon Age Legends battle code. That was just, they didn't make a, like a synth, like a, an effect or ability system or for anything for damage calculations. And it was an RPG game, so basically it was a giant switch statement with like, if the attack was this, and then sub-switch statements of every single different monster type and armor type and poison type and all this other shit. It was like ridiculous mostly gameplay AI tools client server AAA industry pretty cool no combat system for an RPG game oh yeah that was like and it wasn't even that it was that the the lead designer there uh, Soren who you might know from the off-world trading company and like Civ 4 he was the head designer there he wanted to do all the code for the battle calculation so he wanted that that whole switch statement was his his baby of like all this damage calculation crap and so he would go write this as a designer he'd write all this code and then like the engineers would have to just scratch their heads and be like what the why the hell is the damage calculation all screwed up poison doesn't work what the who the hell changed this and to top it off, not only was he doing this, but he was doing it from Lebanon uh, where, <laughs> back in 2010. So he wasn't even on site because like, we're all in San Francisco in the, in the EA headquarters in Redwood City. And he was over in Lebanon, so you'd only be able to talk to him at like 3 in the morning. It's just like, are you for real, buddy? It was fun working with him because I was up at 3 in the morning, so I'd be at EA headquarters at 3 in the morning when nobody else was there, and Soren would jump on Skype, and he'd be like, there's like a civil war over here right now, and my internet sucks. How's the project? <laughs> and I'd be like, ah, it's, it's okay. 
I'm here at three in the morning. That's that's how well it's going. <laughs> I, I at that point who at that point EA didn't really care. It was like you've been a lead designer on some good projects for us, so we'll just you, you can do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> But as for the most ridiculous coding stuff, like on Dragon Age Legends, that switch statement at least eventually got taken out. But what we had to do was because we were writing, the client was an ActionScript 3 web game, and uh, we had a mobile game too, and they were both the same game. Uh, so if you crafted potions on the mobile app, it actually worked in the Flash game in real time. Yeah, so we had a front-end ActionScript and a back-end Java service stack and so there was they had to write the same code twice basically once in java and once in action script cannot open dash in player controller it's dash kin there's a k in it uh so they kept forgetting to write the server code for stuff and like stuff wouldn't work and all that other crap and they kept so and the reason for this is because they wrap everything in abstract classes and they wouldn't realize that, you know, this one object didn't have the same function implemented on the server that it had on the client. So eventually we took classes away from them. It was, it was really funny. Uh, it was actually my idea because I got fed up with everybody like fucking everything up all the time because that's what I do is complain. But my solution was, it's like, all right, well, the problem is everybody's using classes and it hides all the code and it makes it difficult to mirror everything properly when you're writing the same code twice. Um, let's make everybody use public static methods for every single operation that runs on the server and the client. <laughs> and you might think, what the hell, that is the worst idea in the world. And while I, you'll get me to agree with you a little bit, it solved the problem. No longer did they screw up and not actually write the server code. Because they were just, <laughs> it was like, okay, yeah, you're working in object-oriented language. That's great. Um, you're going to write code like it's in C. And uh, you're going to like it. So it was pretty funny. They, The engineers, of course, had their <laughs> the gameplay stuff would write all these like abstract classes and all this other shit and then have like the unwinding to like actually put it in the public static stuff that had to be on the server as well. And they're always really salty about it. And I was just like, you know, when are we going to get our classes back? It'd be like, you can have your classes back when you stop writing fucking desyncs, buddy. And so they never got their classes back because <laughs> they never stopped. Uh, they never, every, anytime they tried to, do anything they end up hanging themselves with it so that was back in the days before running the same code on web clients and web servers and before real cross-platform compiling that actually works uh, for web stuff Before, before Unity. Okay, so jumps, wall jumps, and all that should be tracked. So what I should do is make a mission that's got wall jumps in it. as a tracked stat and make sure it works. <laughs> there were some great moments on that project. One of the best ones was that we had the way that the battle system was written the code from the server couldn't communicate with the code on the client. So it couldn't refill the state. So the server had a battle state that it had saved in the database and everything. 
it would reload and pop you right into the same battle because it's a web game, right? So if you're, you know, it was a turn-based RPG. If you're in battle, like you you could close your web window at any point and pop it back up, and you're at the same battle at the same location with the same monster, which has the same debuffs and all that shit applied to it. All right, so I need a result here for, no, I need a victory condition. Win condition must have three goals. Let's add one. Let's say 10 jumps. But there was one morning where we needed to like sort out this problem with it. Uh, where we needed the persistence to work now or something and I came up with what was called the transmoogler which took all the information from the server and transmoogled it into data that the client could read and vice versa it was basically because there was no logical there was no actual logical construct which could transform the data properly but there was a binary construct which could it was basically like None of this crap works, but the binary formats of the data, uh, you could munge it together. So it was this horrible construct of there's no logical way to put these things together. Oh man, I'm getting... There we go, I got my jumps. And it worked. So we added jumps. I should add lands. All right, goals, jumps, own goals, wall hits, everything worked. And all this stuff is brand new. All right, let's add another thing here for um, wall jumps. And let's add another one for lands. That transmoogler pissed off the combat engineer guy so much. Oh man, that was great. Because he was in the middle of explaining to the producer how it was impossible for him to get this done. And I I said, oh no, I can I can do that and only take me like an hour. <laughs> he just looked at me like, are you are you kidding me? Like, like, what are you going to do? And, uh, and then I did that thing that was horrible. And then a year later, I was his boss. And he quit. <laughs> Let's see. What's in the player states? Um, so we need wall jump. Yeah, okay, so.
All right, so that should broadcast those events so we get our air jumps and wall jumps properly set. And let's make sure we actually get our double jump stuff working properly. It's just the game industry is one of those just idiotic things. And just things happen for really dumb reasons. Uh, like one time at EA when we're working on Dawngate, uh, there was a there was a dodgeball tournament for EA. So of course our studio put together a dodgeball team, and our team captain was our art director, uh, which was great. Because it's a really good idea to have a whole bunch of artists on your uh, game team go play a sport which is known for breaking people's hands. Uh, so, of course, we played dodgeball. And actually, our team was really good. We had uh, the our UI guy was a semi-professional dodgeball player from Canada. Like, he was damn good. Like, he'd do, you know, he'd be the guy who'd, like, catch a ball with a backflip and come back and just nail somebody. It was just like, Jesus Christ. Give that guy a rubber ball and send him to war. But the, uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think for following, says GG. But yeah, so we actually uh, got to the championship game for EA, like, dodgeball, because there, there were plenty of teams. And during the championship game, our art director broke his hand after specifically the producer said, all right, I want you to be careful today. Don't break your hand. And just the last, like, two minutes of the, the game, he broke his fucking hand. He's just like, are you serious? <laughs> he had to go to the producer after after lunch and be like, I've got good news and bad news. It's like, well, all right, what is it? It's like, well, the good news is we won the, the dodgeball tournament. I'm like, all right, so... Bad news is I broke my hand, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to be a real effective artist here for a little while. God damn it. Alright, so we got our wall jumps, which are working. We've got our lands. Let's also get our air jumps tracked here. So air jumps... And let's go to our game mode options and add air jumps. Where are you? Player jumps, player air jumps. Let's add three. <laughs> go to your Go explain to your executive. You're like, all right, so why don't we have the art? Um, well, you see, we hosted a dodgeball tournament, and our artist broke broke all their fingers, so we're gonna be late on this one. Really? Fun times. Let's see, when is Adam going to be streaming tonight? I know he's got the family stuff he's working with. Three hours? Yeah, that makes sense.
Yeah, this is my first game in Unreal 4. Um, I, we used it back at Molten Games, but I was a server engineer, so I didn't use it. I just wrote the backend servers. So a lot of the stuff that I've written for Unreal, I've done, I've done things wrong, but whatever, it's still working. So we should have air jumps. Excellent. Excellent. So I can kill myself by jumping into the wall, which is exactly what I wanted. Let's make sure these jumps are getting reset. Yeah. Looks like it's working pretty well. EA has an in-house engine for some of their games, right? Like FIFA? Um, I I think pretty much every C++ project that they're running at EA, they're using the Frostbite engine. Not basically everything Frostbite. Like they even, like they used to have stuff for Visceral, I know had their own like custom engine sort of thing, which did dismemberment real well. And then like 